Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Masters and Mentors. And if you are a creative and you are trying to figure out how do I make a living out of doing what I love and that's art and creativity, then this episode is for you. I am so excited to bring Melissa Sutherland Moss to Masters and Mentors. She is a fine artist, a visual artist, and an amazing human being. So we are going to get into her personal and professional journey to its success on this episode of Masters and Mentors. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me here. So let's tell folks a little bit about you before we jump into all these good questions that I have for you today. Yes, yes, yes. So I am a interdisciplinary artist, like you said. And what that really means is that I cover a range of mediums, right? So I can do collage, I can paint, I can work with acrylics, I can do installation work, I design, I could do digital work, digital collage. And so interdisciplinary just means I use all of the mediums to create work. So it's not just one thing, right? I think I'm very known for collage, which is just like hands-on cutting out, but I can turn that into digital. I can turn that into an installation. I can turn that into video. And so interdisciplinary just means you sort of like mix all the mediums into one to um, work on your practice. Let's just talk about what you do for a living, because I find it fascinating that, you know, as a creative, the partnerships, the message, the um, exposure, like all of this is almost its own work of art behind the scenes that supports you being able to be a creative for a living. So will you tell us a bit about what you do for a living in your words? When I think about what I do for a living, I color. I design, I perform, I curate, I transform. And so I do all of those things. Like I cover a range of creative things. So someone could come to me and say, can you build a set for this show? I'll do that, right? I'll come up with a treatment. I'll think about set designs and costumes and how I want people to look. But if someone is like, oh, design something for me for a label, you know, I'll work with collage first and then scan that, turn it into something digital. And so when I think about what I do for a living, I, you know, it, it it's a lot of things, right? I color, I draw, I design, I curate, I direct, I transform, I install. Um, so it's all those things. What do you believe that it takes to become successful as a creative and build a sustainable career? I think that it starts with faith and really believing that you could do the things that you set your mind to do, right? You have to really believe in yourself and believe that when you say you can do these things that you actually can do, right? So it begins with that. And then I would say followed by that, it would be consistency and persistence, right? And so when you're persistent about the things that you believe you can do, things will sort of fall in place for you, right? And so that's for me right now. Not a lot of things fall in my lap just at the drop of a dime, but being that I'm persistent and I'm con consistently going after what I want, things will then start to fall into line and fall into place. And then you'll start to see the money flow in, right? When you love what you do genuinely and truly, you'll see the things, the money will flow. Will you just talk a bit about um, maybe yourself in high school and you looking at what to go to school for and the universities or institutions where you would get your education and then early on in your career, what were some of the steps that you took? And if you can just share a bit with us so that anyone watching can start to imagine what their roadmap to success could be, modeling and using some inspiration from your story. I'll start and say that I always knew that I wanted to be an artist. It was something just in my bones. I knew it. Any job that I ever took, I always made sure that it was somewhat creative. Even if it wasn't designing or coloring or directing, I wanted to be amongst creative. So for example, one time I took a counseling job, but it was for a fashion institution school. 
And so I, in my mind, I was like, okay, at least I get to be around creatives. I get to, you know, fashion is art too, right? Um, and so just like that, just think about, even though if you're not getting the actual job that you want, still try to be around creatives, people that will inspire you. And so when I was in high school, I always knew that I wanted to be an artist. And so I went to college and I majored in studio art with a concentration in painting. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't know where my art was gonna take me. I, you know, I always knew about like the starving artists and how artists don't make a lot of money, but I was passionate about art. And so I said, I'm gonna just stay on this path because it's what makes me happy. And so I got my degree in painting. And then after that, it was just kind of like free for all. I was just out in the real world, didn't know what to do. And so I went back to grad school and I studied psychology, but I did take some courses in painting, right? And so I still was being very persistent about this art career. And although I was studying psychology, I still knew that you know, maybe I could mix psychology and art. Oh, maybe I could do art therapy. And so I tried art therapy, and right? And so I opened up myself to different ideas around art and I started to do research on what could this degree take me? Where could it take me? And so I started with art therapy and um, hosting classes and things of that sort. When I graduated grad school, that's when I got the job as a counselor in LIM College which led me to many different art endeavors, right? And so you just never know where your path is gonna take you, right? But just, just stay focused on wanting to be around creatives and wanting to be an artist. In our careers, we all experience limiting beliefs, challenges, and barriers. And so will you talk to us a bit about some of those challenges and barriers and even limiting beliefs that you've mm -hmm. overcome to get to where you are in your career? It's a constant overcoming, right? I can't say right now in my career, I've overcome like these challenges or limiting beliefs. I think as an artist, you're always gonna have those limiting beliefs, right? You're always gonna create something that you think sucks. You're always gonna create something that um, is gonna make you feel like you're not a good artist. And that happens over and over and over again. And I think, that's still a big challenge for me and how I get through that is that I continue creating. And I've had to learn that over the years that in order to push through that phase, you have to continue creating. In the past, when I have stopped, when I thought that I wasn't good enough and I stopped, that caused me to stop creating for years, right? You'll stop in that moment and then next thing you know, two, three years go by and you haven't picked up a paintbrush, you haven't picked up anything to create. That is a huge challenge. So when you have those limiting beliefs, you have to push through by continuing creating, right? And let's just say you create something in collage that you think is suck and it, you're frustrated. Maybe put collage down. Let's pick up some paintbrushes. Let's explore in acrylic. Let's explore in printmaking. Let's explore with assemblage, right? And so assemblage is finding different items and assembling them together to create sculpture, right? And so there's many different ways to push through those limiting beliefs, especially as an artist, because it's, it's so hard. And it's really hard as an artist to be on social media because you see different works of art that you tend to compare to yours, right? And so you can be creating something that is so amazing and you see someone else creating something, they have 20,000 likes, you only have 40 likes, that'll crush your spirit. You'll, you'll stop creating. But you can't let things like that get to you. You have to just keep pushing through and maybe start with something else. So Melissa, we okay. really appreciate you joining us today. Your story is an inspiration, not just in what you do, but how you show up and continue to show up and do your work. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And we will be on the lookout for all of the amazing things that are to come from you. I know that God has so much in store for you and I'm just excited and happy to be acquainted and in uh, community with you and let me know when I can come out and support your next art exhibition. Yes, thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much.